Well, hello everyone. And welcome back to my shop. Welcome folks to uh, my first attempt at repair on this uh, 1975 Corvette Stingray uh, or what they call a C3. So here we go and uh, what we're working on today is we're going to work on why my headlights aren't working and I'm going to utilize a tool that I had used a whole lot in the past but it's going to prove to be very handy today and that is my Mighty Vac. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug the, the end of this tube here and let's watch the gauge. And you see it's holding vacuum. So the gauge, the, the, the gauge is good and the tool is good. I'm going to lift my thumb off and you see it dropped. So I know my test tool is good. Now what I'm going to start with, I'm going to show you a close up here. I'm going to touch on this deeper once I get into the repair, but I just kind of want to show you all, if you're, if you're still with me <laughs> on this walk around, I want to show you what they did with vacuum back in 1975 on this Corvette. The, this is the light switch right here, and this, this, this switch is called a bypass switch, and I'll explain its function. But anyway, vacuum comes out of the uh, engine right here. There's, that's a filter. That's if anything that's collected in all this crap won't get back into the engine and then this is a, supposed to be a check valve all right in other words vacuum can go this we you know when it's sucking vacuum in but when you shut the engine out it's supposed to keep the vacuum in the vacuum system and not leak it out okay so that's what that check valve does normal operation pull the headlights on vacuum comes up goes through the switch now oh normal operation no headlights vacuum is going through the switch through the bypass all the way down to these two what they call uh, relays vacuum relays okay and then they apply vacuum to these two server servos these are amplifier servos okay and that vacuum keeps the uh, headlights down Okay, so there's constant vacuum on this side of those uh, servos to keep the, the lights down. Also, at this juncture, that's another main vacuum source that goes straight down. And what you have is an air tank, okay, sitting here, uh, a vacuum amplifier tank, I guess you could call it, that is storing all that vacuum, all right? And that, va that vacuum, is that stored vacuum is what's also going in. Uh, all right, I touched on these two relays here. See those uh, yellow lines in the middle? They go to the vacuum tank. So the vacuum from the you know from comes down from the engine into that tank is amplified, and it goes up into these valves and then onto these sides of the actuators that keeps them closed. That keeps the lights down. Okay, pull the light switch out. It cuts off vacuum. All right, coming down that white line to this side of the uh, relays, so they de-energize. Okay, so they drop down. What that does is the vacuum that that, that comes out of the tank is then redirected to the this back side, the green vacuum lines of these actuators, and that's what pulls the lights up. Okay, so the lights are actually on, I think, or there may be a contact. That, well, no, there can't be because the lights turn on without them even coming up. So once the vacuum pops them up, the lights are on, and there you go. <laughs> and then turn the lights off. Vacuum's removed from uh, the red, placed on the green, and, that, and there's springs, and it also helps pull the lights back down again. So that's how it utilizes vacuum to control the uh, This is my vacuum source from the manifold right here. And there, if you can see it way down there, there's the filter. Okay, then it comes up. 
and it hits this T and then that's a one-way check valve. This black with red stripe vacuum lead goes into the uh, passenger compartment and this black with a white stripe goes in there. I'll guess that those two are these two right here that goes to the light switch and the bypass switch, okay? So what I'm gonna do, instead of trying to crawl underneath here and test, I'm gonna try to test from out here and I'm gonna disconnect them back in. I'm not as nimble as I used to be and there's no way I wanna get underneath a dash unless I absolutely have to. So I just wanna make sure I remember to put these lines back where they belong. Hopefully they'll come off. All right, without breaking these plastic pieces. Good deal. Just remember the white. I might write that down too. <laughs> I get the yap and I might say, uh oh. Alright. Okay, that, so that'll be black and white going to the back, right? Yeah. Alright. Put him over here. And I'll put him up here. get something that'll write. All right, so I got it wrote down so I can put it back. Hopefully I won't tear nothing up, get these off. Okay, good, I did. All right, now the way this should work, this, the, the black with red is the vacuum going in. Let me see, that'll fit in like that. And let's see, yeah, wrong one. Alright, now with the light switch in the off position and the bypass valve in the up position, I'm going to put vacuum on the line going in and it should not build up and it should come, should come out. And there you go, it's not building up. Alright, so what I'm going to do is put my thumb over this and uh, we should build vacuum up. We do, and it's holding. So that tells me that my light switch may be good and my uh, bypass switch is good. It's kind of dropping down a little bit now, but I think it's good. All right, I'm going to let it off. There we go. So at least it's building vacuum. That preliminary test says, okay, maybe it's good. Now I'm going to pull the light switch on. What that should do is stop. I should get no vacuum out of this now. All right. Headlights are on, and they're on down, down there. All right, I should, uh, without plugging it, I should get vacuum, and I'm not. All right, look at that, I'm not getting vacuum. I think I got a bad headlight switch, but I'm gonna double check something else before I go from there. It was. So now I've got the by bypass valve in the pulled down position. What it should do, no matter what the light switch does, it should build vacuum. It should, yes, and it's not. So, but if I cover it, I, oh, when I cover it, it's not either. So, it could be that my, uh, well, that's looking like my, uh, backup switch my bypass switch I'm sorry okay all right push him up all right so it looks like I've got that already figured out all right hmm how can I test that statically Let's see I've got to put vacuum on another line going back there all right, let me think about that. Look at my schematic here. I've got to remove vacuum. Okay. All right, I'm 
go underneath the dash. I didn't want to have to do it yet, but here we go. Well, I'm almost about ready to make the call that it is actually the switch. Well, I reversed the vacuum, the two vacuum hoses going into the bypass valve. And I think I saw a uh, somebody doing a test on uh, online saying that it was important which went where. So anyway, I'm at the point now where I've got uh, a check valve I believe is bad because I can go ahead and put me a T in and I get uh, I get operation on the headlights. So, yeah, uh, that and the bypass valve working. So it looks like my light switch is passing vacuum in the on and off position. And I'm going to verify it with the, these are the two leads, or the two vacuum lines going in to the dash, which should go to the uh, switch, from the switch to the uh, bypass valve, and then through the bypass valve and back out. And because of the color code, uh, the print I've got that I'm going by doesn't show the color code. But anyway, it matches. Black with red stripe is the input. Uh, black with white stripe, which matches the other lead going back, is the output. Okay. So, right now, I've got my vacuum, my mighty vac, hooked up to what I think is the input going into the uh, into the dash, into the light switch and bypass valve. And I pump. I don't get any. I don't get any pressure at all. Now I'm going to cover the output and there you go I got vacuum and that's the way it should be in the off position all right in the off position it should have vacuum because that vacuum is also used to help pull the lights down when you turn them off so now I'm turning the headlights on I verified the lights are on okay now the vacuum valve in the headlight switch should now be open in other words it should not be passing any vacuum so I'm going to cover it with my thumb and pump it up and look at that I'm getting vacuum all right so that's why it won't it's overriding what pulls it up so the, the, the system don't know what's going on all it knows is that it's got vacuum on both sides of that actuator and apparently <laughs> the, the closing part of the actuator wins all right, go ahead and turn the lights off. So anyway, the thing is, I don't think I can get to that. I'm going to have to research now to see how I can get to that light switch easily. I don't want to have to uh, lay on my back in that time spot. So anyway, I believe I got a bad light switch and I got a bad check valve. But... I'm going to test the light switch once I get it out. So that's my next stage. All right, I didn't show pulling the switch out, but I'll show putting it back in. And it was kind of a, not too bad, much of a pain. But anyway, I got, here's the switch right here. All right, let's plug my mighty back up. All right. Now, we stand where we can get this thing. All right, right now the switch is off. I got the vacuum, which just now popped out, going into the input. According to uh, what I've my research, vacuum goes into this number two port right here. All right, now let's pump. Switch is off. Oh, and I got to cover the, the other port. All right, it's holding vacuum. All right. I'm going to lift my thumb up, and it dropped, okay? Pump up again. All right, so that's good. That's how normal operation, and it drops. Now I'm going to turn the lights on. Pull it out, cover it, and here we go. What? It's still making vacuum. See? Cover it again. Got my thumb over it. Yep, there's your problem, lady. <laughs> so it was the switch. After all that I went through, it was the switch. It's 
passing vacuum in the on and off position. So I need to get another switch. Like I say, I didn't show pulling it out, but I'll show uh, reassembling it. I'll kind of show a little bit, I think. Here. All right. All right. Fresh back from the parts store. And let me tell you, <laughs> $350 just don't go far uh, these days like it used to. But anyway, I've got some, some parts that I've needed immediately that uh, once I install them, I can get this thing back on the road. So let me show you some of the stuff. All right, a couple of rebuilt Lone Star calipers for the front. Boy, they look good. They are uh, Delco Moraine rebuilts, supposedly with new uh, stainless steel uh, inserts. So. Uh, we got them to go in. Now, I went with the lip seal as opposed to the O-ring. This isn't going to sit as much as, uh, as it did. And uh, I say the advantage of the O-ring style is uh, that if you sit a lot, it's, it's less likely to dry out and leak. Lip seal is good enough for me. That was the OEM, and I can, I can work with that. Here's a future repair I've got coming up. Those of you that recognize this tool know what I'm talking about. And I'll cover that in due time. A couple new soft lines for the front disc. Brand spanking new headlight switch. Brand spanking new vacuum uh, check valve, the correct one. Brand new filter for the vacuum lines. This clip, I don't know how to install it yet, but I decided to get it. It's supposed to uh, tighten up that door flap to get it back up. Now on my passenger side, it, 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 it's flush. Uh, the spring is bringing it back up. Driver side's worn. This is supposed to correct that. I don't know, we'll see. And a lens for the uh, visor light. That does not work at this time, but I noticed one of the lenses were missing and I'm gonna get that working. And an entire <laughs> light bulb kit. This supposedly has every bulb that this car has in it, replacement, including those uh, courtesy light, long lamps there. So anyway, and I like Wix filters, so I got a Wix oil filter to, and uh, stopped by O'Reilly's and got me a couple cans of uh, uh, brake cleaner. And uh, so now I'm armed and dangerous to get some stuff done. All right, now I'm back with some pair of parts. Let's, uh, let's do some swapping now. We'll go ahead and put a new, the new filter on. There's the part number for it. Packaged. <laughs> I guess to put their put their number on it. All right. I do not think direction matters. The old one. He looks kind of, you know what? I don't even see anything in there. I think they've already punched the screen out. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm looking. I do not see an arrow. I don't think it matters which way. All right. The way it's sealed up. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about the direction.
76. And that's the check valve. and I left the, the headlights and stayed up. I tested it without a light switch and they stayed up. This should turn them on. And there we go. With the switch hooked up and off, they close. Now I'm gonna turn it on. Let's see what happens. Well, they're a little slow. Wonder if I got a vacuum leak somewhere still. coming up though. I don't know if that's normal or not. I think one generally pops up faster. Let's put them down. Alright, let's do it again. That just don't... <laughs> There's something still going on. I don't know what it is. I believe they should come up faster than that. Of course, it's cold, as you say. down faster and idle. Now let's see what happens. Oh, it's trying. Is that aftermarket uh more further troubleshooting to do but at least I know now I know at least I got them working looks like I believe there, there may still be a vacuum leak somewhere and I'll trace that out all right I believe I'm about to stick a fork in the headlight uh, series here and uh, but I will be revisiting and revisiting it once I uh, fully troubleshoot the entire vacuum system now the heating and air system also uses a lot of vacuum. As a matter of fact, the heating and air switch is a nine position uh, vacuum switch that opens and closes servos all over inside the dash and around. And I'm working on that in another uh, also, but uh, as far as the headlights, I'm going to go ahead and stick a fork in it. Now, I explained to you about the pull down switch that I call the bypass. Now it was uh, it had the hoses routed into it incorrectly. 
The reason why I say that is because I noticed when I was underneath the dash troubleshoot and I could hear air leaking, you know. <clears throat> and what happens is with the valve off, you put the, uh, the valve, the uh, vacuum input into the, to, into the output side of that, it's just leaking out into, you know, into air. So uh, I reversed that and that got my, my doors to lift and lower with just it, okay. And then I had a bad uh, a light switch that was, uh, it's not, instead of cutting the vacuum off when you turn the lights on, it was leaving vacuum on the circuit the whole time. So I had, and then I also had a problem with the incorrect check valve, which wasn't passing enough. It, uh, it was too small on the main through, the vacuum being provided, or being the line going to the vacuum tank was actually too small going through that valve, so it wasn't providing enough vacuum uh, volume. So, so I had what? I had three problems. I got there. I had a bad light switch, had a bad check valve, incorrect check valve, and I had the uh, pull down switch incorrectly. Uh, not wired, but the, the, the input and output vacuum lines are incorrectly put into it. Now, I tested the original tank, and uh, it is actually slower with these uh, do with the uh, headlights than that aftermarket one that's in there. So I'm going to stay with the aftermarket for now. And once I'm satisfied that all the vacuum is good and not leaking, I may revisit that just to see, because that's about two times, maybe three times, the volume of that aftermarket, and you would think it would actually, once it, once it pulls all the air that you got vacuum in there, it would provide more amplification. But we'll see. So now we're going to move on. You know, I've got the dash apart because I'm changing out bulbs and troubleshooting the vacuum lines, and uh, well, and I'm also going to be replacing some parts that you'll see in the upcoming next uh, vlog that I'm doing on this. So anyway, stay tuned for that. I hope everything's going good with you and yours. Everything's going good here as far as I know. Don't want to know any different. And I wouldn't complain if it was uh, not going good anyway. Good, what can you do? I guess complaining sometimes could be good, but I just try to take care of the business and we'll go from there. So have a good one, and I hope to see you around on the next one. See you.